Back in 2017, when I built my PopCan solar heater, I was working full-time in telecommunications. I managed a huge area for a phone company. And at the same time, on weekends and holidays and vacations, I was running a portable sawmill business. I was actually the most active sawyer in eastern Washington at the time. So time was something I didn't have a lot of. And that led me to go out and just buy everything except the lumber, because I made my own, to build that heater based on what I'd seen online and what others were doing. Seemed like those worked fine, so I just went out, bought all that material. So the first thing I would say to some of the comments I had is, yes, I'm quite certain that you could go out and scrounge all those parts and build it for next to nothing. No doubt in my mind at all that you could do that. I just didn't have the time to do it, folks. So I went out, I bought everything, and I built it. Now, a couple of things that I considered at the time was one, a video I had seen where the builder was using pop cans or beer cans suggested a couple things to me that made a whole lot of sense. One, that thin walled aluminum cans both heat up very, very quickly in the sun when painted black, and two, pass that heat onto the air inside or flowing through those cans almost instantly. So that's the reason that I used pop cans. They're very, very thin-walled aluminum cans. You know, you could just crush them. A kid can crush those cans easily. That's how thin they are. But because of how thin they are, they actually not only heat up almost instantly, but they nearly instantly transfer that heat into the air that's traveling through them. So that's the first reason that I use pop cans. The second was that the shape of the can, despite having a hole drilled through the bottom and the tops, which I ended up actually using a can opener to remove, created turbulence inside that air tube that I had created. And that turbulence would slow the air down a little bit and allow it to absorb even more heat before it exhausted out of the heater. So that's why I use those pop cans. Beer cans, pop cans, anything of that shape, in theory, would absorb the heat quicker, dispense the heat very, very quickly into the air traveling through, and the air traveling through would have enough turbulence that it would really absorb a lot of heat. And I can tell you that since I saw temperatures of over 200 degrees at the top of that heater, and in fact, when I created a situation that the air couldn't move through it, it got so hot that it literally vaporized the insulation, well, it seemed to me that that method worked very well. Now that doesn't mean that you couldn't just paint a box black, put some glass over the front of it, put a hole in the bottom and a hole in the top and away you go and it's gonna work. Of course it is. Anything black is going to heat up. The question was just, could I transfer that heat very, very quickly, almost instantly to the air traveling through the box? That's why I use those cans. And it worked exceptionally well. There were some mistakes that I made and I hope to correct those here soon. One of them was that the first three or four rows of cans, I used a high temp silicone that did not work very well. It actually was a very weak bond. And when the heater got excessively hot, that silicone started to disintegrate and the cans came apart. When I switched to fuse it, well, the fuse it handled the heat, bonded very well and kept all those tubes working just fine. So when I rebuild this heater, which I am going to do, I'll be using Fusit on all of those tubes that came apart because of the silicone. Now the next thing I did wrong was when I bought my Lexan, the cheapest Lexan I could find was a honeycomb style. It was very expensive. I wanna say that in 2017, it cost about $100. And while I had a full-time job and a business that I was running and I could afford to buy something, well, I just didn't want to spend that much money. I believe that solid Lexan at the time was about double that. Well, today it looks that like I could get a solid Lexan piece for $200. And that's the price that I used when I figured out what it would cost to build my heater today using basically the same components that I used back then. Now, another mistake that I made is I put four inch holes in the bottom and the top of the heater, thinking that that would be plenty of air to travel through, even though I'd seen others were using six inch holes. And I will be changing to six inch when I rebuild the heater, because I think that you need more volume coming through it. I think it'll actually work better. So that is one thing I'll do. The other thing was that later on, when I was trying to prevent cooling at night when the air reversed, I put in a baffle in the bottom of the heater that had springs that were just too tight. Those caused the fan, the bilge fan that I had, 
to overheat, shut down, and cause the whole unit to melt down, essentially. So today, when I look at it, there have been a lot of great suggestions from commenters in my video to do things like just put very, very light flapper valves, uh, ball valves, all kinds of different options, and I think there's a lot of great ideas for that. So I'll definitely be looking into doing something like that when I rebuild the heater. And I am going to rebuild the heater, folks. In fact, in my last trip to the cabin, we took the heater down, put it in the back of my truck, and brought it home here to where I live. And I'm gonna bring it into the shop and completely rebuild that heater, and I'll bring that to you. But I wanted to say, it worked quite well. Now, I didn't know how to calculate how much heat it would make. I'd seen some estimates on other channels. I figured it would make plenty of heat for my porch to keep my batteries warm, which is something I needed to do because I could get down to 30 below zero up there. So you gotta keep your batteries warm when it's like that. But I also hoped that it would work so well that I could begin to transfer some of that heat from the porch to help keep the cabin a little bit warmer. There were times when I would return after being gone for a couple weeks and it would be 18 or 10 degrees inside the cabin. It takes a long time to heat it back up, even with a wood stove and a propane heater both going at the same time. So my thought was that if that heater was essentially too big for my little eight by eight porch, that once the porch got hot enough, I could then have some baffles open up and perhaps even a fan run to drive some of that heat from the porch. In any case, the Popcan solar heater worked very, very well, albeit it was kind of expensive perhaps for what a lot of people are building. And there were some comments that I basically over-engineered or overbuilt that Popcan solar heater, and that may be true, but at the time it was just what I saw and I thought, you know what, this is gonna work. So I went ahead and built it that way. And I could afford to do that without having to go scrounge up all the components, although I did scrounge up all the pop cans. It was absolutely worth it to build that heater and I am going to rebuild it because frankly, why not? It works great. And you know, whether or not it's free heat or not, <laughs> I would say the heat's definitely free once you've done building it. I mean, if you amateurize the build over the amount of years that I used it already, well, 250 to $300 over a seven year lifespan, that's pretty good. And it was still kicking out warm air when we took it down. So those definitely work. Now, in my last video, I talked about going to a mini split and a lot of people said, yeah, but that's gonna cost you every month. But for me, it's not because my cabin is completely off grid. I've got over 2,400 watts of solar. So by putting in a mini split that's a little more efficient or maybe a lot more efficient is gonna be great in the summertime and in the winter, when it is sunny out and if I've got lots of solar, I can use it to add heat to the cabin as well. That's something that I wanna try. Now I am going to upgrade some of the solar panels at the cabin. I have a plan to put in three 400 watt bifacial panels on my ground mount system where I have the 205 watt panels where frankly, those are 15 years old and it's, you know, they work great, but why not double the capacity of that solar array? give me a little more power in the winter time, less likely I need to run a generator, and maybe I could run a mini split for some heat, and that might work really well as well. So there you have it, folks. It was worth it to build that. I am gonna rebuild it and bring it to you. And if you have any questions, put them down in the comments below and let me know. I try to answer every one I can. Meanwhile, folks, I'm gonna put another video right out here for you to check out. Thanks for watching. Y'all have a great day. The old jar hit out.